Okay. We have a nice little A-frame home here. Just a little outside of the city. It's 86 degrees today. It's almost that now. Um, it's 55% humidity. The sky is mostly clear with some scattered clouds and some haze. As we approach, we see a septic system which is beyond the scope of this inspection report. What we notice approaching the house is that we've got a bow and it's generally lower over here on the north end of the front porch, but it's lowest over the front steps and it comes in and that slope, by the way, there's not enough pitch on that slope to have shingles. But we do. They're there. These posts, unless it was engineered otherwise, these posts should not be farther apart than eight feet. These handrails should not be lower than 38 inches. These balusters should not be farther apart than four inches. This is siding, okay, so it's over a wood, most likely it's a wood exterior. I'm not sure exactly, I mean it could be, I'm not saying, it could be another alternative exterior that was popular back in the day, it could be asbestos, it could be um, composition, um, but usually it's wood, but there's an old saying I just made up, if they're siding they're hiding. When you come back and you retrofit with a siding like this, it's not usually because it was built that way. It's usually because they were covering something. And this siding is taking a little beating. Uh, we've got, you know, from the weed whackers or what, but we've got damage on the siding in lots of places. These are vents. So that's vents for the crawl space. So the siding is loose. Look at that. What's under there? Wood so far. Now I don't know how I'm getting under here, or that I'm getting under here. I mean, it's kind of loose. The siding's loose over here. I was in there trying to pry it, and um, that doesn't look like an access. So maybe there's an access inside. I haven't been inside. Wood mulch next to the house, especially wood mulch under the drip edge. That's considered conducive to wood destroying insects. Termites like that. I've got wood mulch next to my house. I get it. I get it. Wood mulch next to my house. We all do. Most of us. A lot of us. But that's conducive to wood destroying insects. And these bushes touching the house also conducive to wood destroying insects. These handrails are lower than 34 inches. I wouldn't consider them graspable. I'll have to look that up. I'll look that up. You shouldn't have open ends. You can snag your clothes on that and trip. And again, the four inch rule. rule. So we've got that. We've got these things. Okay, back to the siding. You hang siding. You hang it. Okay. Whoever installed this was very whoever installed this was very proud of it. They fastened it real nice and good. And there should be blocks behind the fixtures. They fastened it real nice and good. The problem with fastening it real nice and good, the problem with that is that now the siding cannot expand and contract and remain in place. When it contracts, it pulls away. When it expands, it buckles. Buckles like that. And again, there should be blocks behind all of these penetrations. No GFCI on the front porch. That's a loose floating junction box. This header on the front porch is less than six foot ten inches. Over here in a couple areas, 
Most of this is level grading and drainage. I mean, the house has been here forever. This doesn't surprise us. It doesn't surprise us, but it's level. The water doesn't really shed away from the structure as fast as it should. And over here in areas like this, areas like this, it's, it's even negative. It's even negative. Now, this is legal. I mean, you know, in the city, newer construction, whatever, but this is the primary evaporator drain line for the air conditioning system. Oh, you know what? I'll say that. I'll say that. We got another video. We got another video. We sure do. Let's... No. Nice and snug. Nice and snug. Or wrong and snug. And then over here, we don't have the mulch so much. It's petering out. But now we're starting to develop debris from all the leaves and stuff. And you know what? Believe it or not, debris is conducive to wood-destroying insects. This is the primary evaporator drain line. I said we were going to... And we will revisit this. But the primary drain line, discharging water that close to the house, that's conducive to wood-destroying insects. It's also causes... I mean, this is expansive clay soil. So when it expands and contracts, it's about three inches. So if it's wet over here and it's dry over there... Well, you're going to have three inches of vertical pressure pushing on the structure. That's just physics. Trees should not be closer than 25 feet to the structure. The roots expand about as far as the branches do. These roots probably expand farther because they've been cutting the tree back to keep it off of the house, which is good that they did. Same thing, tree, 25 feet. Do you think the roots are coming in here and pushing up? Maybe it's equalizing the water. I don't know. No extra charge for the boomer humor. Still, well, still fastened really good. What's behind there? Styrofoam? Some kind of a styrofoam. They, they, they backed it with some kind of a styrofoam. Check that out. Okay. So it's gonna have some good insulation qualities. Let's get, we hope we get some good ventilation. I haven't seen, except for those little strips at the front porch, I haven't seen any crawl space ventilation. That's not good. That's not good. And so far, I haven't seen any screens, any window screens. Now, as ugly as this is, these little nails, these tacks, they're not wrong. And that... That's metal. That's vinyl. Metal and vinyl. But that's not wrong. Somebody kind of heavy handed with a hammer here. More negative drainage. More negative drainage. See, I think the water's coming in this way. I do. And we're going to speak. We're going to speak. We're going to speak about the um, satellite dish. Portable sheds are beyond the scope of this inspection. They're beyond the scope of this inspection. So. This is drain coming out of the laundry. This is the water heater. I'm supposing. You know, I'm guessing. I don't know. It's the water heater. Looks like it's probably an all electric house. The temperature pressure relief valve drain line, unless it's tankless, and it's kind of small for tankless, temperature pressure relief valve is supposed to be pointed towards the ground, and it's not supposed to discharge any farther from the ground than six inches. That's some more negative, and then you've got some electric cable right in there. We'll talk about that in a little bit. This is the clothes dryer vent. It's sprung open. It's sprung open. Moving along, we do not have wood mulch on the back side of this, but we've got wood to ground contact, which is the way this house was built. That's conducive by design. Wood to ground contact. Soil's too high. Again, there's no way to get around that because based on the design of the structure. Is that ideal? No, it's not ideal. We got a little more, a little more siding breakage here. 
Moving on along. Is any of this sagging loose? No, no, none of this is hung. They got this in here real nice and tight. And we got more damage, more damage. It looks like this door has been decommissioned, which is okay because you got a high step. That's higher than seven and three quarters inches. But this isn't a real door here. Just like that's not a real window up there in the gable. By the way, I'm not seeing a gable vent. I'm not seeing a gable vent. I'm not seeing any vent. It's going to be interesting. Well, well, we do have an exhaust vent. There's a turbine up there. There's some gable vents right here, but this is a flat roof. This is a flat roof. There's, there isn't an attic up there to be vent. Okay, we've got some gable vents. Excuse me, soffit vents. Wood mulch picks up back around here. It goes around this corner. These steps are not dimensionally uniform. It's not supposed to be more than a 32nd of an inch height differential. One, two, three. A handrail's not necessary here. A handrail's not necessary here. Cracking and peeling paint. They should not have painted this deck. They should not have painted this deck. So what happens is, is the wood actually breathes. You can stain it. But when you paint it like this, then it encapsulates it. So any moisture that's underneath here, it can't exit like it normally would. It means it's trapped underneath there, which means the deck will rot prematurely. That's what it means. More loose siding. I still can't get under here. I surely hope there's something inside. Do no harm. Wood mulch, wood mulch, wood mulch. Next to the house, but it's not under a drip edge. But it's not under a drip edge. Still going to be on the report. Still going to make the report. But this is... It's still conducive to wood destroying insects. You got wood to ground contact and wood mulch next to that. I was just going to make a judgment call on that. There's some more of the Boeing siding. Boeing siding. What else have we got? Come on. You can find something, bud. There's one. That's kind of neat. Just keep looking. We're on the south side of the house. This is the gable. And right there, right up in there, if you'll notice that the edge flashing is between the shingles and the little freeze board over the fascia board. They kind of have it backwards. This is, it's a unique design. I mean, uh, you know, for the time. It's by design. And it's attractive. But that flashing right up there in that corner is supposed to be lapped a minimum of two inches. And it's not. The tree's too close again. And this is about where we started. 